All eyes are on Ukraine as a bloody new chapter of war appears to be unfolding right before our very eyes. Now civilians are directly in Russia's crosshairs. Now, for quite some time, I've been very critical of Ukraine's government and rampant corruption in the country and by government officials. Now the military uh, and President Zelensky and ordinary Ukrainians, they are fighting valiantly against an all-out invasion from its hostile neighbor to the north. Sadly, innocent men, women, children, they're dying at the hands of a tiny tyrant named Vladimir Putin. Look at this six-year-old little girl was mortally wounded during Putin's indiscriminate shelling in southern Ukraine. And as the AP described, quote, she was pale, her brown hair was pulled back with a rubber band, her bloody pajama pants were decorated with cartoon unicorns, and her blood is on Vladimir Putin's hands. So my question to the Russian soldiers tonight following Putin's orders and waging this war on civilians and even children, really? Is this, is this, is this the legacy you want for your life? Is this worth it? Do you have the courage to stand up against this naked aggression against innocent men, women, and children? Now, this is a viewer warning. This is a very hard tape to watch, but it's important to see. Take a look. Sanya, Да, покажите этому путинскому хуйлу вот эти глаза вот этого ребенка и плачущих врачей. Фидор мой, чтоб он сдох. Сучар. Давай, давай. Отошли. 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 Now, the medical personnel, as you can see in that video, as they resuscitate or try to assess, resuscitate uh, this girl and revive this girl, they're crying. Vladimir Putin killed that six-year-old girl. Vladimir Putin started this war. Vladimir Putin is a murdering thug who is willing to kill even children to satisfy his maniacal territorial ambitions. You may notice here below our U.S. flag is a U Ukrainian flag pin for people like that little girl a standing in solidarity with the innocent people of Ukraine, a sovereign country needlessly attacked by a hostile dictator. Now, the world needs, I would say, a new rule. Bill Maher likes to do new rules. I want this new rule. If you are a murdering tyrant who invades a sovereign country and you kill innocent men, women, and children, uh, you forfeit your right to lead any country. Now, the Russian military will hear about shows like this. They need to stop taking orders from this murderer. They need to take him out. The world needs to agree that Putin should no longer be running Russia. He's a murdering, authoritarian thug, killing innocent civilians, and civilized countries need to agree that he must be removed sooner than later and by whatever means necessary. The people around Putin, I'll let you figure that out. Now, scenes like this are everywhere as Russia blasts schools and playgrounds, hospitals, large apartment buildings, cluster bombs are going off, rocket attacks, nonstop shelling. These are not targeted attacks against Ukrainian military installations. No, it's Vladimir Putin attempting to punish Ukrainians for their resistance and break their will through a campaign of indiscriminate violence. According to Ukraine's Minister of Health, as of Sunday, over 350 civilians have been killed. That number is likely much higher, including many children. Over the weekend, uh, here's what former President Donald Trump had to say at CPAC about Putin's hostile invasion. Take a look. And when you have a weak president who is not respected by other nations, you have a very chaotic world. I have no doubt that President Putin made his decision to ruthlessly attack Ukraine only after watching the pathetic withdrawal from Afghanistan. The problem 
is not that Putin is smart, which, of course, he's smart, but the real problem is that our leaders are dumb. <laughs> dumb. And they so far allowed him to get away with this travesty and assault on humanity. That's what it is. This is an assault on humanity. It's so sad. Putin is playing Biden like a drum. You know, we played the tape last week of Donald Trump without a single note lecturing in the face of the leader of NATO, telling him how idiotic it was, we, America, paying the bulk of money for NATO to protect Western European countries, NATO allies, from being attacked by Putin. And yet they're making billion-dollar deals and are becoming more and more reliant on Vladimir Putin and Russia for their energy needs and how stupid that whole policy is. Now, I would play with the current president, Joe Biden, said, but uh, guess what? He was nowhere to be found this weekend. While Putin was putting nuclear weapons in play in this conflict, Joey was taking time off in Delaware doing what? I don't know. Now, of course, President Trump is right. The Western world is being stupid. We need to understand this thug for who he is. We need to understand that the only thing that works is strength. In fact, according to a Harvard-Harris poll, nearly two-thirds of Americans believe this attack would not have happened under Donald Trump. Why do you think that is? Because, well, Putin probably feared Donald Trump. Putin knew that Trump, if he said it, he meant it, he'd do it. Weakness invites chaos. It invites carnage. And by the way, Donald Trump didn't need, he, after, after, after four years of his presidency, he made America energy independent. He made America a net exporter of energy. That is a big factor in all of this. And without a doubt, Biden's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, he abandoned our fellow citizens. You don't think that helped embolden every two-bit dictator around the world? I said at the time it would. Unfortunately, I was right. I wish I was wrong. Take a look. Americans held hostage, abandoned behind enemy lines. Day 198. Day 198, Wednesday, it'll be 200 days. Joe Biden's turned the page. He never mentions them. The media mob never mentions Americans left behind, green card holders that are legally allowed in this country left behind, our Afghan allies abandoned, stabbed in the back. We promised we'd never do this to them. Abandoned all by Joe Biden. If Joe were an honest, decent leader, he would address this in tomorrow's State of the Union address. Well, we could talk about all the things that he should address that he won't address. He would announce a new wave of sanctions against Putin's oil and gas industry and vow to expand American energy production in order to meet the energy needs of not only our country, but the energy needs of our allies in Europe, our NATO allies. Joe's economic energy policies, they've now hurt every American family with a 40-year high in inflation. We pay more for every item we buy, more to fill our tanks, more to heat and cool our homes. Why? Because everything costs more to get it to the store. It costs more for a gallon of gasoline. I'm almost paying twice what we used to pay. He gave up America's energy independence. He compromised our national security. He compromised the world security. Who would think, you know, after inheriting energy independence, that Joe Biden literally imports 232 million barrels of oil from Russia and a billion uh, uh, barrels of oil from Iran for the first time since 1991, or 600 million barrels of oil from OPEC. Joe Biden's beholden to the radical New Green Deal socialist. He won't admit that he's wrong. He won't reverse course. And he won't, again, become a net exporter of energy like the economy he inherited. Italy is even now considering reviving the country's coal plants to break their energy dependence on Russia. So at a bare minimum, Joe should block the U.S. from importing all Russian oil. And by the way, every decent country in the world should put that main sanction on Vladimir Putin and Russia. That's the sanction that will mean the most to Putin. And that's the one sanction they have not put in place. Any sanction that doesn't hit Russia's energy sector is pointless. Remember, Russia... You know, as a, as a gas station, as John McCain said, masquerading as a country. But guess what? None of this is going to happen. Apparently, the Biden administration has no problem continuing killing the Keystone XL pipeline. But blocking Russian oil and gas imports is totally out of their control. Really? Take a look. What is 
the stance of the U.S. and buying Russian gas at this point? At, at this point, are we ready to pledge not to buy any more Russian gas? Well, uh, as you know, it's really uh, — let me give you actually kind of an update on this, because it's a — it's um, — I think there's been a little confusion. One moment. <clears throat> Um, so as it relates to Russian gas, U.S. government doesn't dictate uh, where the U.S. market sells our own oil and gas products, nor where it acquires crude or refined products from — for domestic consumption. Now, clearly, the climate alarmists cult inside the new Green Deal Democratic Socialist Party, they're fully in charge. They take top priority over the American people, over the world peace that we would have being energy independent, a net exporter of energy. And under their leadership, America, the world is falling apart. Take a look at your screen. Since Joe Biden was inaugurated, COVID-19 deaths are over 500,000. Gas prices nearly doubled. And again, inflation at over a 40-year high. Add to that the border crisis, the crisis in Afghanistan, and now a full-blown war in Europe breaking out right before our eyes. And it's clear that our State of the Union, well, guess what? The state of the world is not in a great place because America is not leading and America doesn't have a strong leader. And I bet Joe Biden's probably asleep at this hour and he probably doesn't know what day it is. But tomorrow, according to reports, we are to expect Joe Biden to double down on the new Green Deal socialism platform as a magical cure-all for America's woes. That is the dumbest policy you could ever embrace. It's no wonder Joe Biden, even ABC, Washington Post poll, has him at an all-time low at 37 percent, with an even lower 30 percent of independents approving of the job as president in the White House. We're going to have a lot more on tomorrow's speech in a moment.